Hey family, welcome back to the Unchanging Podcast. My name is Edwin Marcano. I'm the youth pastor at Grace Point Gospel Fellowship. And I'm super excited because this episode we have two alumni from Chosen Youth. We have Giannis Acevedo and we have Ogi Ilahu. who are going to be joining us today to offer their perspective on youth retreat, but their perspective in general regarding life as a young person. So uh, before we even start the podcast, before we, well, before we even start, Ogi, can you tell me just a little bit about yourself, um, how, how far um, removed you are from the youth ministry? Um, I'm not going to say I'm so far off removed from the youth, industry, uh, youth uh, ministry since I still associate with a, a few friends that are still in the youth as well. But I did just start going into young adults, and the transition has been pretty well. I still keep in touch with a lot of friends that I made in the youth ministry, and I still keep tabs with a lot of the leaders that I've made relationships with as well. That's pretty exciting. And what about you, Giannis? Um, how about you? How how long have you been out of youth? And a little bit about yourself. I've been out of youth. I would say it's been almost it's been almost a year now, and I've been I've been being what <laughs> what God is telling me to do. He's giving me a calling for doing social content any digital content to spread the word around. So that's what I've been doing ever since I joined Young Adults and started my college experience as well. Great, great. Um, that's that's pretty awesome. And real quick, what is God telling you to do, Giannis? That's just, before we even get into it, what is God telling Giannis to do? So I've been getting, you know, like requests of like interviews, podcasts as well, that they were wanting me to be a part of. So I was like, okay, this keeps on going on. Is this a calling from God that I'm getting from? He's really wanting me to use my talents that I've been getting because I'm majoring in digital graphics, but I've also been doing YouTube as well as a content creator, lifestyle vlogs and videos as well, and performing on stage as well, so that I can also inspire other people that don't know about the word and we want to spread the word as much as possible because I think this generation needs it a lot. You think or you know this generation well, needs I it. Know, I know I know this generation needs it a lot. <laughs> this generation needs it. We all need Jesus, but this generation needs Jesus. Um, Ogi, real quick, what is something um, I know, but can you tell us what is your heart? What is your, your desire? And it has to do with serving. What do you really want to do with your life? Um, my desire is actually to serve in the United States Air Force as a commissioned officer. Um, I had the opportunity to apply when I was going into the Air Force Academy. I was close to it, but sadly it didn't work out, but I knew that I was still on the right track to get there. So my plans are to actually go in after I do, sir, after I do my two years and get my associate's degree. That way I can go through a program that will allow me to act, ser actively serve in the enlisted side while getting my bachelor's. And through that, I can go get my commission and become a commissioned officer in the Air Force. Man, that's amazing. That's amazing. Isn't that isn't it pretty awesome, Giannis, that we have a young man here that wants to serve? It's very awesome. Our 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 nation. Our we country. Also, our country and maybe serving God. So it's super exciting, man. I'm, I'm so excited. Every time I think of Giannis and I think of Ogi, I think the words that come to my mind is really servants. And that's something that's been really exemplified in your time with youth. Um, since I've been here, I'm going to be the youth pastor now, going to be on two years, coming up on two in September. And both of these young people here have served. If it's in the worship team, if it's just randomly helping out with tech and other things, you guys have served well. Now, <clears throat> can you guys tell me what is one thing or one big takeaway you would take away from your time within the youth ministry? Let's start with Giannis. Takeaway by me. Something you take, like a life lesson that you took away from youth, something that you carry with you and you learned it during your time here in youth ministry. Oh, I learned a lot when it came to youth ministry, and I was so, and I'm so thankful for all the youth leaders as well. That includes you as well, because, because I've been here for so for so many years. Yeah, I really didn't know a lot about the word, and I was just starting to come. I was just starting to come along after I after something happened in the family that was a bit challenging for me. Um, that challenge being my sister ran away from home and that making me the only child in the house and by far the youngest as well. 
And also, she also didn't finish college, and that really broke me down because she was also the one that made me find out about the college that I'm going to and was inspiring me to go to that college too. So that's where I'm going right now. Um, for youth, it was it's so it's so much to learn, and it, and you take those la- and you take those lessons in your heart as well that that the Lord really wants you to take as well. That's really good. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing even about your sister. And you know, we pray that God would keep her and protect her, Thank and that you. she's gonna be the the woman that God's called her to be. You gotta pray and believe God for that. Yeah, we're praying. Um, and um. Ogi, what is a takeaway or something that you can bring with you outside of the youth ministry? The real question is, what can't I take away? Or what can't I bring outside of this <laughs> youth community? Because there's every everything that it happens when it goes into the youth program, all the all the activities that we do, all the associations that we make, all the trips that we take, and all the lessons that we learn, all have a role to play outside of this church, outside of the outside of the sanctuary, outside of the program. And the biggest thing that I've learned is how influential that children are when it comes to any sort of any sort of idea that's related. When it comes to the ideas that are being thrown out in today's world, they're really influential and they can grasp that they can really grasp that in an instant at the age that they are currently. That youth group is probably the biggest influential group that we have within these walls. And the best part the best part about it is that with that influence <coughs> The tools that are used within the youth group and the tools that we have in today's world can also be used to grow the kingdom of Christ and grow the and grow the spread that they will it can last through generations because of the of the things that we've done within the youth group, all the worship, all the trips that we've taken, it's good, and all all the retreats that we've taken as well. Everyone can have an experience and have a personal relationship with Christ through these walls and that's one thing that i'll be very thankful for so i'm excited he mentioned that because uh even though you guys are not going to be on the retreat this year i'm sorry i'm sorry to say this you guys aren't in the retreat this year uh but our retreats theme is unchanging and you know i was thinking about what does it mean right unchanging like why, why did god give me unchanging and it comes from this thought it comes from the scripture verse that god is the same today yesterday and forevermore rather he's the same yesterday today and forevermore god doesn't change but society is constantly changing right what society called bad one day is good another day and what it called good that day becomes bad another time right but with god his yes is the yes his no's are no's he is faithful throughout and we need uh we need young people to stand on firm truth unchanging truth not going back and forth like the water And so um, as I was praying, the big three topics that came to me this year for the retreat, and I want to get your perspective on this in a moment, that we're going to be dealing with is for young people, teens particularly, is sex, identity, and substance abuse, drugs. Mm. Um, What are some of your thoughts? And and you guys could jump in. We're going to do it like this. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask each one of you guys some some takeaways from what what do you, why do you think First of all, do you guys agree that those are big issues for teens? Absolutely. Well, they are absolutely big topics for teens as well. All right. Um, so what about this? Why do you guys think that the teens are struggling um, in their sexuality or identity with sex, meaning having sex with one another or sexting or sending nudes, and then with drugs, the substance abuse? Um, we'll start with Giannis. And, oh, ra- rather, we had Giannis first. Let's, let's start with Ogi. And then Giannis, you, you come up. The reason being is, like I stated before, they're the most influential groups when it comes to just starting to, to learn how, uh, just starting to learn how to make their way through life. They're really confused. They're experiencing different hormones. They're exp- we're experiencing different, uh, just different ideas that we want to introduce. And they start exploring because that's the nature of a child. They explore. So the more they dig into it, the more they find themselves into this dark hole of all and they uncover all of the natures that the world offers different uh, different sexualities different uh different attractions and different substance uh, different uh drugs and um uh, substances that they just take and they run off with it 
they start they start indulging in this into this addiction that they can't really get themselves out of because they like to dig deep because like the saying the, the saying goes curiosity kills the cat and that's actually pretty um accurate as to how teens are going through their lives to this day that's really good so you felt like the society sets you up for for curious peerings to look into things to see things to watch things Giannis, what are your thoughts about sex drugs and identity those are things that i don't think teens are really supposed to be into until they're like into a, like a more mature age and if and like you know like so you're supposed to have sex bef- um after you like get married you shouldn't have sex before marriage i have seen a lot of people that always have like se- that had sex before marriage and that really breaks my heart it does really break my heart of like all the cruelty in here as well here in new york it's a lot um and also for and also for myself i am a, i am i wouldn't say i'm a victim but i also have experienced sexting before when it came to high school and it was a lot and it was just it was very speechless when that happened to me and it was a bit very crude when he was like asking nudes from me and I hated it so much that broke off the relationship and it does it saddens it saddens a lot of people when they're trying to really experience that whole what it is to be kind of like an adult but i don't but i don't think they should experience that in such a young age just like i have just like i have as well so so you Giannis, i just want to stop over there you actually have experienced this going back and forth with sexting and yeah you said it made you feel terrible why do you why do you think a young person may be attracted to that type of relationship what do you think is the appeal there to to sexting what do you think is the appeal in that nature i think it's the it's what they are really desiring the most especially when it can't when it comes to relationship when sometimes when people have a relationship the first sometimes the first date that they want is one is one their love to probably they could be there too they're probably um wanting their body as well to have sex as well for and also and sometimes for those people they just want their body instead of their love that they really wanted i think it's all coming from the desire that they that person wants so do you think i i think from what i'm hearing and ogie maybe you can you could agree here with yeah, this. Yeah, I need a little help. No, no, I think, no, you're doing fine. I think for me, what I'm hearing, it's really coming from a place of wanting to be acknowledged and loneliness. Yes. Uh, it does ha- It does occur at that same stage, but it's not always into that same category. It's also, um, there's something about sex and, bo- and sex and bodily image that gives people a sense of ecstasy, like a dopamine rush similar to, the, to a hit of heroin, for instance, because not only are you're you get to, if you're sexually attracted to a certain person in that in that person you will have it's by bi- it's biological that you'll have a sense of where you want to perform um unholy unholy acts to one to that person two to yourself because of the biological response to to reproduction it's it's it's, it's basically um it's basically how it's supposed to go but premarital is not going towards the will of god and by going towards um sexting you're having that sort of off you're sort of having this um trying to get into a personal relationship when you're probably miles and miles away from each other at the same time so that one doesn't work out in any way shape or form and two it goes against the will of god goes against the will of god and i think you guys can agree that that's really and it's not just sex thing it's pornography it's it's having sex it's doing all types of things really hijacking right what God has ordained for you, because would you agree that God has a better plan than uh, for you than sexting? Oh yes, right? definitely. Would you agree that God has a better a better person set aside for you than just going out and having hookups? Absolutely. Right, and so because of that, we realize that society. This is one of those aspects, right? God said, "I want you to live this way." God says, "I want to have you in a happy home and a happy marriage, and I want to. I want your bodies to be for one another. I want it to be sacred." But society says what? That's whack. Right? 
How many of you actually a question real quick? How many of you guys, and we're just staying on the sex topic for a moment. How many of you guys think that some people look down on people keeping their virginity? What, what would you What would you think? Honestly, I'm gonna say people look down on people that still keep their virginity. As a matter of fact, people call it a flex on how many bodies that they can count, the amount of people that they they fornicate with, and honestly, that disgusts me. Because if I want to have a personal relationship, I want that personal relationship to between you and I. I don't want it to be shared with some other person and to be because violated in a way that I wouldn't. I would be called a side piece or just someone on the side. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I I would never want that, especially if another if for another person. That's why I just find it hor horrific thinking about people counting amount of the amount of people that they've slept, they slept with, with as mm -hmm. a flex. It's yeah. just terrible. Yeah. So when he says body count, we're not talking about people he murdered, but rather we're talking about people <laughs> they had slept with or they had been with. Um, <laughs> so uh, Giannis, um, it looked like you had something you wanted to say as he was. As he was talking, anything you want to say or add to that? I was about to say, like, I remember I was watching something on Instagram, and it was about, and it was a question that someone said, and they were asking, why are we not allowed to date um, a non-Christian? And this had, and I've had this experience before, because there were times where I wanted to date someone that I really liked, and he liked me. But at the same time, I couldn't because he's not a Christian and he doesn't know God. And so what a past and so a pastor answered it, and he said, "If he doesn't understand the Lord, then he won't understand you." And it's and it's important to have a rank in a relationship. Can you say that one more time. Say that one more time. If he doesn't understand, if he Lord. doesn't understand the Lord, then he won't understand you. That's good. It's a mic drop. Yeah, mic drop over there. Um. And oh, I forgot, I forgot what I was about to say, but the, the yeah, there were times where I wanted where I wanted to date someone, and he was one of my best friends of all time, it still is, and he's a non Christian. Although I have been trying to invite him to Grace Point, let him know the word as well, but it doesn't budge a lot. And it's like okay, but I still pray for him to this day, so that's good. Um, and also, oh yeah, so I was about to say that there should be a rank in a relationship. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a lot of things, but first you have to put God first before, uh, before your family and also before, and also before your boyfriend. God always comes first. It's always a requirement. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you have a family, if you have, um, if you have a boyfriend as well. You should always put God first and trust in God with all the difficulties and all the fears that you have. And as as I was writing in my project for a sermon, <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's really good. Putting God first, and you know, I think um, you're hitting on topic, right? When we put God first, when we say God, you're number one in our lives, the other things start to lose importance, mm -hmm. and that's important. The other things start to lose importance, which brings me to the next topic. We, we talk sex identity and drugs why do you think let's start with this way how many teens do you guys know in your school in your high schools how many do you know have have struggled with some type of substance if it was a vape if it was um weed if it was something heavier like fentanyl does do you guys know of anyone in your even in your circle that may have struggled with that oh so many so many in my so many in my high school like they do they do drugs a lot i remember one time i went into the women's bathroom and then and it this was like this was like mostly in the mornings i would go inside the women's bathroom i would sometimes have to like get ready probably put on some makeup but also i would see uh girls they would vape they would vape inside the bathroom so that they wouldn't get caught and so i so i saw it and i was just so disgusted from what i was seeing and also sometimes I would see sometimes they will always like put it um, under their sleeves and then they would just put it in, then just take some and then try to hide all the smoke that it was coming out. And me just being like, what in the world, man? What's going on? Yeah. This, so you were seeing it right then and, and just not even your friends, but just around the school. What about you, Yogi? It was honestly any friend group that I go into, at least one person would be under the influence of weed or just be vaping. I remember when I was in high school, 
every bathroom. We had three floors of bathrooms. Um, there was the third floor, second floor, two bathrooms on either hall on the first floor, and one in the one and one bathroom in the um, in the gym. Every single bathroom I went to would have the smell of weed. It had the smell of weed. At least one of them would have um, have oh. an edible packet in the trash can. And it take all my willpower not to go into the unisex bathroom where no one ever had to, where no one ever smoked it. It took all my willpower not to just go in there and actually use the bathroom because all of them were, all of them were just filled with weed. Even um, while, even while I'm going uh, out with some of my friends, they just randomly start popping, popping perkies and smoke and smoking in the back. Look at that. So even prescription oh, yeah. medicine, and so, and and that's just, you guys just represent two students who were, who were in high school who had a friend group but statistics show us that there's a lot of teens struggling with substance abuse oh, yeah. and let me just ask you a question you guys came out of it and you are not struggling with substance abuse what kept you starting with ogi what kept you from you know kind of touching and and, and getting into that type of of lifestyle or even even trying out any type of substance maybe vape or weed or anything else Honestly, if I'm gonna be honest here, the biggest uh, the biggest thing was just my trust in, my trust in God, cause I understood of how destructive it was at a very early age. I mean, it ba- I used to live in the Bronx, and when I was little, I was um, I was heavily de- dealt with by secondhand smoke, cause everywhere I went, there was always gonna be one person with a cigarette a cigarette blowing in my face, so. I struggled very heavily with secondhand smoke, so at an early age, I was already influenced that smoking was extremely bad. You already felt the impact. I already felt the impact at an early age when I had it blowing in my face. It was already terrible as it was, and I just could not stop coughing. As a matter of fact, that's how I developed a small case of asthma when I was little. So that I believe that I went through that, I went through that experience so that I would have the, enough strength to avoid myself from being associated with the friends that would constantly do the substances as well. I, I already really had that good. fear of God within me so that I would, um, that it'd be my shield to prevent me from indulging in that same, that same experience. Are you guys catching this? The, he said, I had the fear of God in me because I reverenced God that I didn't want to hurt. I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want to hurt myself because he knew who his creator was. Thank you, Ogi. Mm-hmm. Giannis, what about you, sis? What's kept you clean and, a, and, a, and 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 feeling pure and a bunch of impurity impurity for for a lack of a better term here um it was from the experiences that the people have had when it came to drugs before in their past you know like those assemblies those um that high schools will always have yep but they never take it seriously <laughs> though they will those people that used to have that used to do drugs and now they're sober for some from so many years they will actually come up to our high school and then we would have assembly about it saying how bad how bad it is including my, including my mom and i also get like so many commercials where it says vaping has nick has nicotine inside and i was like oh my goodness that is disgusting um and i remember one time it was an after party from a school musical that I just finished after my freshman year. We were having a party, and then suddenly, peep, and then suddenly, some of the students they were bringing out bottles of of like lemonade, but there, but inside there was linked with alcohol, and they were bringing beer as well. And while we were partying, one of the girls was trying to give me a can of beer and then at the same time was just like absolutely not (laughs) and i and i will say i did not like drink any of it of any of it at all i although i would like sometimes i would sometimes ask me that would be just like can i at least taste what it tastes like and i would just drink a little bit i'm just like that's nasty man (laughs) i was like nope not gonna drink alcohol ever again (laughs) (laughs) she's like it got no taste my body is freed of these impurities exactly (laughs) Nah, it's good. That's good. I just love that you both shared the importance of God and even you, Giannis, since sharing about the importance of of just being surrounded by the right people, right? You took the assembly serious. I took it very you, seriously. You took the word seriously. You experienced the ailment in your body, Ogi. She's she realized I don't want an ailment in my body. 
And so you guys took it. And I think that's so important, right? Because, again, back to why we're having this retreat, right? Unchanging Mm -hmm. is because we want to share that, hey, look, society at one point said this is bad. But now society's it's all up in your face and saying it's okay. But God says no. He says we, we have what? What does the Bible say about our bodies? A temple of what? Of God. Right? He paid a price for us. So who are we to take after he paid that expensive price, his precious blood, who are we to take that, that price that God paid for our bodies and destroy it this way? And, and what you guys are doing is, is amazing. Now, I want to move on to kind of our last topic for the retreat that we're going to be covering and we're going to touch on some other things. But we're looking about identity. So Ooh. identity is crazy, right? Uh, over the last five years. Um, Absolutely crazy. I don't know. <laughs> My goodness. We don't know what happened, right? We went from like boy girl to boy girl this to mm-hmm. so why do you think in the last five years particularly the last five years society has shifted so quickly on redefining a person's identity honestly my idea my re, my the thought process for this is individualism the sure. idea of being atoned to one's personal ideas and needs and being more independent of yourself. It all started when um, women wanted to be more dependent, uh, independent and um, wanted to be equal. Don't get me wrong. There's a, there's a few inequalities that are still within, within the area. But at the same time, they're trying to they're at the same time. They're trying to um, they're trying to inf- enforce a way of life that would not be suitable for one's uh, person for one for a woman to be personally active. Because mm-hmm. women are trying to divorce from different families and break them all up just to claim settlement and have a life of her own. She's breaking up family. She's breaking up relationships with the uh, with the father figure in in the children's life. They're they're breaking up different family homes, and they're having these children. I think that they don't need they don't need any man within their lives to be and be independent in themselves. When you do, when they have to realize that the man of the house is the rock rock in which they stand that's what it says in the bible is that the man is supposed to be the one to defend the house as well and my reasoning for the amount of people that are um that are have multiple genders and multiple identities is because they're confused as to who they have to stand upon since they have this idea of individualism they don't they they i their ideas that get muddled up within their within their head have them uh, believe a lot of sorts of ideas that they have for themselves and they have they have it incorporated within the society creating the cloud of uh, confusion that we have to this day that's interesting so a couple of things real quick just want to make clear so that way our listeners don't think we're uh, saying that women are not equal. Can we agree women are equal? Of course. Women are absolutely. Equal. Are equal. Absolutely. Um, and when they fought for their rights to be equal, that was important. That was noble. Uh, but I think what you're saying is really the evolution of that, right? That they took, um, maybe let's just use the, the, the term feminism, right? Uh, they went extra with it and they tried to um, take the role that God had placed for males. And vice versa, right? Can we say that males are trying to take the roles that uh, God had placed for women? Um, right, because we all hear right roles are a societal construct. You ever heard that sign, right? Yes. Oh, is this a? So- but it truly is, right? Men are called to be the head of the home, mm. and women are called to be the helpmate. But they both serve, and and men are there not only to be the head of the home, but they also to love their wife as Christ loved the church. That means mm. sacrificial. That means giving of themselves um, for the wife. And I think if we live that way, we wouldn't have as much confusion. But I think what you touched on, Ogie, was really important. Right, you touched upon how. This confusion comes from two places. One, broken homes. But two, of a society really taking the roles that God has ordained for men, women, children even, and reversing them completely, which is setting in confusion. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you say to that, Giannis? Do you agree? I I absolutely uh, agree with you, Um, especially from the experience that I have. It's very LG... Everything from like LGBTQIA plus community <laughs> so much um, is very. I would say it's very very big in our in my high school back then, and they even have a they even have a club about it. And so for me, I was like the only few Christians that were in the high that were in the high school that did that really didn't want to support anything that my high school was doing that was really against the word of god 
and that that to me was also one of my one of the sad things that I experienced which was when I was in a dressing room for us to get ready for our costumes for the music for a musical I remember one of our cast members declared herself as nine non-binary but I and yet her pronouns they were telling him that telling her that she's they them I kept on calling her she her because I know that's because I know that's her gender and in this world there's only two genders there's no there's no gen there's no other genders except for male and female I don't know where everybody (laughs) got all of this influence from but that's not the way that God created us to be. He created us to be male and female. He has a role for us. He there's a reason why we're here. And the reason that we're here is to spread the word of God with the abilities and the talents that God has given us and inf- let that influence the other people so that they could go to heaven as well. That's right. And and I'll just say this, right? God cares about that community, but he wants them to be whole. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because we know that lifestyle is not right. We know that lifestyle eventually leads to death, right? Because all sin, all sin leads to death. And, and in this case, we... Uh, so let me ask you guys. Let me put the question on you. What, what do you say when a friend of yours or a person who is close to you says, Hey, Ogi or Giannis, your Christ or your Christianness, it doesn't allow you to love us. You're not very loving. How do you how do you how do you reconcile that? Personally, I'd say that's wrong. It's not that we don't love you. It's that we don't accept your idea in which you stand upon. And that's why we should love you even more. Because we are willing to give you to give you the truth to that leads to eternal life. It's only upon you that we have to accept it. That's crazy. That's so good. That is so, so good, right? That's how we love people. We share the truth. We tell them the truth in a loving way, in a caring way, and we trust that God will pierce the heart. What about you, Giannis? The same thing with Ogi. We're here, we're here for, uh, for the truth, and there are so many people that just don't want to accept it, especially with all the experiences that we have experienced and with God. We are now. We feel very fulfilled with good, with goodness of God, the graciousness of God, and just people are just not really, are just they're just really denying it, and I feel like, I don't know, people should have really accept that as well. That's nah, really good. Now, nah, I mean, I'm my heart's full because I'm seeing you guys. Um, like I said, you're almost two, almost a year out from youth. You're just a couple of months out, two three months out from youth, mm-hmm. and looking at your lives and hearing your heart for God, but even your stance for truth. So, which brings me to my, my next point. What is the importance of a retreat? What is the importance of a retreat for you guys? And then what what comes out of that experience? And I just want to, if you guys can share a little bit of your experience at the retreat, leading up to the retreat. Uh, we'll start with Giannis in this case. So real quick, what is the importance of a retreat to you? I think for me, a retreat is... A gathering of young of young worship of young worshipers of God and just praising him together but also but also we're also learning we're also learning about ourselves what really God what God is really calling for us to do as as a young teenager as ourselves um, what he really wants us to be in the future and f- for and from the retreat from the only retreat that I've ever went I ever went to it was just fulfilled with praise so many so many influential worshipers of God so many activities as well so much fun Uh, it's fun and amazing fun 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 and amazing experience everybody (laughs) everybody should go to a retreat for fun and Jesus yes for Jesus as well (laughs) but yeah um and also the pastor is just just giving us a sermon of the word and even though we are and even though we can be far away from wherever we are we know that we know that they are still in our hearts from all the fun and the love of god and the overflowing love of god that he has given us with all of our friends oh, that's really good okay what about you man what is the importance of retreat to you um you've been on 
since I was here, you've been on both of them. Um, I'm sure you've been on more before that. Um, what does a retreat mean for Ogi? And what are some of the things that it helps you get through, ha- has helped you get through? Uh, honestly, a retreat, in my opinion, is like a spiritual vacation. Because spiritual vacation, because the life life can get so overwhelming with all the with all the lies that you're going to be told today. It's just a some place where you need to want you just need to wind down for a while and focus on focus on God. Both retreats, honestly, were one relaxing, two fun. I'm telling you right now, it was so much fun. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> like we'd have. Pink. I remember the first retreat I went to one. I'm back in 2016. We went up to the Poconos. We stayed in wooden cabins. We had a whole game room. Where we could play billards. Ooh. We had a table tennis. Cha- we had a table tennis tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. We came in second place. I was so mad. I was. So mad. <laughs> yeah, they get a little competitive at the retreat. They, letting you know that they, they are. They were really competitive. We also had a manhunt, cops and robbers. We played basketball. We went. There was a lakeside. There was a lakeside where we put, uh, we we were on rowboats and the canoes. We had an aerial playground. We would just went on harnesses and climb rocks. Kayaking. There's just a lot of activities you can do on a lot of these retreats, and it's just a lot of fun. But at the same time, it's just a place where sometimes you can just take a walk through the stream, and just focus on God, and and just be marveled at the wonders that He's done. I mean, it's really just a place where you can just go away from the lies of the world and just focus on god yeah i love you said the lies of the world so at the retreats we had the last two retreats uh were unplugged meaning no cell phones and some of you guys had withdrawals there were teens shaking i need my cell phone uh like little little cell phone crackheads like i need a phone (laughs) oh what's it called but how did it feel to be with no tech for the better part of three days how does that feel to be just you god and a bunch of teens coming in building community and, and getting to know god how's that how did that how did that help you uh Giannis? that sounds so peaceful without no tech or anything at all just nature and just god and just being with god i remember i remember my first retreat that i went um they made a youtube they made a youtube about youtube video about it and then one of the um challenges that they wanted us to do was okay put your phone put your phone aside grab your bible grab your notebook and write one thing that you are very grateful for in any other way and i remember the and remember the guys just having the cameras and just looking just zooming me up just just me just writing down what i'm very grateful of in the playground i bet they still have that youtube video up over there i bet they still have that for so many years um but yeah I think without no tech, I think without like no tech at all, I think all you will feel is just overflowing peace, overflowing peace of God. That just sounds so peaceful for me as well. So peaceful, so calm. I think Giannis wants to go back to the youth retreat. Yes, please. I would love to. And I think Ogi would try to sneak on too. Ogi's a wild man. You don't know that. (laughs) You don't know that. I don't even know. So he may already be on the bus. Who knows what he's been doing? Can I get, let me ask actually a question. What is some advice you would give to someone who's struggling? Uh, maybe their parent is forcing them to come on the retreat. They don't really like coming to church. They don't really like um, being with youth. What is something you would say, each one of you guys, just give me one thing uh, 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 that you would encourage. Say, hey, this is why you want to be here. Ogie. Okay, first thing, you got a good parent if he's if she's forcing you to go on this retreat. That's cost like $125. No, it's more than that. Way more than that. More than that. Oh, gosh. Last time I saw it, it was like 125 That was way more. You got a good parent. Second of all, give it a chance. There's a lot of things that you can do when you're at a retreat. I mean, you have so many activities you can do. You can make new friends. You got you got free food, like <laughs> what five meals, five meals for the whole week, and they are all good. You got basketball, soccer. Um, you got you got rope courses, kayaking. Or you can just go. You can just go in a game room and chill. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. You don't always have to be on your phone or, or be on be on a game game console to have fun. So and good. even in then, just give the even if you're still not convinced, just give the lessons a chance. There might be some relatable uh, encounters that people may have had that might steer you. It might steer you in the direction that you want to go. 
especially when uh, there's a lot of people that have probably been through way worse than what you have. I remember there's a lot of leaders mm -hmm. that have steered in a course where I couldn't even fathom. There was a lot of people that went on a, went through an area where I didn't think that anyone could ever go and come out of the way that they did. So just give the, if you're still contemplating on whether or not you're going to have fun, give it a chance. Don't be so, um, don't be okay. so one-sided and just let God work through you. He'll work through you if you just go give him a chance. Mm. That's so good. Thank you, Ogie. That was really good. Giannis, what about you? Okay, advice for all of you young ones out there. There is a reason why your parents put you there for a reason. I remember the time my dad told me he was going to come, he was going to take me to Grace Point here at Chosen Youth. I did not want to even go to a single bit of it because I did not like going to a new church. But I'm telling you, there is a reason why your parents put you over there. I, I think without my dad not putting me into Chosen Youth, there's no reason that I would be here at this very moment right now and i think if you give chosen youth a very very special chance there's a there will be so many ways that god will trans transform your life and transform your future for a very very Praise good god. reason and Praise god is god. loves you god is there for you no matter what he and he's putting you there for a reason amen yo let's yo Giannis is preaching ogi is setting up stuff for here for us to to really dig into so you know you guys been on retreats. You came back from retreats. You've been transformed. We can hear it in your voice. Um, just want to touch base. What is it like transitioning from youth to young adult? Starting with Giannis, because you've been out longer. How has that been? How was that transition for you? You came out of youth, and now you're in a whole new world of young adults. I felt more mature than I'm in young adults. <laughs> when I first, when I realized that I was going to be trans um transition to young adults i was just like already because <laughs> i just i just got um i think i i think i just got an acceptance letter that i was accepted to my college which is pensacola christian college and that i was going to be tra transitioned to young adults at the same time i was like oh man i'm gonna miss chosen youth <laughs> But at the same time, I'm just like, they're next door. I could just visit them whenever they want. And Giannis want. does visit. And I OG still do visit. to this day. <laughs> um, but it felt, I felt more mature. I felt more mature in the word. And I don't, and I don't know why. I still feel like, I still feel like a child. But I know that the Lord has made me more mature Amen. than I ever was in the past. Amen. So you felt like this was a uh, you were able to transition well. Mm -hmm. You had you had um, people who were able to help you in that transition. Yeah, that's really good. What about you, Ogi? You're about a month or two, like I said, out of youth ministry. Um, how has it been so far? Now that you're attending young adults on Wednesdays, how's that transition been? Honestly, it's pretty good. I won't lie. A lot of the lessons I wish were as engaging as they were in youth. I mean. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still gonna be used to the lessons that were in youth compared to the sermons of young adults. But honestly, the lessons are just as impactful, and they dive into, they dive into the word that we're reading really well, and it ties all together to the way that we're, we're gonna be living our lives soon Amen. throughout, throughout our own, and how to uh, navigate, navigate the world without one our parents to, our parents to uh, rely on. And to to ensure that everything that we're being taught, we're able to display to anyone else who wants to, who is either looking to get into the world or is straying away from it itself. Because uh, there's a lot of people that are that either are that you want to learn about Christ or they don't want to be a part of that at all. So the biggest thing that I take away from young adults, hopefully, is for one that i can that i can hold i can hold my own shield with god upholding me as well and two that i may be a light to that. anyone else that is willing to um Love come that. to christ um <clears throat> i guess last question for both of you guys is what is something you would like to see in the youth today and, and let's and particularly even the chosen youth those who are attending chosen youth what is something that you would like for for you to see in their lives um if it's freedom from this if it's a more bolder uh christian life lived out what is something that you would like to see 
as you're kind of passing on the baton, you guys graduated, you guys are young adults now in life. What is something that you would like to see for the generation coming up behind you? What is one of your hopes for them? Oh, man, when you said generation behind us, I already feel, felt old. Oh, my gosh. That... <laughs> Yo, what am I? Just... <laughs> I was just like, oh man, I'm don't answer, old. don't answer that, don't answer that. Just ah, <laughs> uh, oh my goodness, the generation behind. Oof, there should be um, don't there are some. I know that there are some you there are some young ones that are from chosen youth that are just they're just going, but they're not really there for the youth. That's good. I would really want to see that in the youth because I know that there are some people that are just there just for the fun and just for and just for the food. But they're not really there for the praise and they're not really there for the sermons. Okay. Because that's, that's really how good. I was like before and not going to do that again. <laughs> amen. No, amen. And uh, so that's what you would like to see. You would like to see them more engaged within the uh, actual sermons, community groups, things like that. Yeah. And not just be there for the food and the basketball and the fun. Yeah. That's good. No, that's 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 awesome. What about you, Yogi? Honestly, I can say I can feel the same way with that, but the biggest thing that I want to see is every week as I pass this as I pass the doors on my way from going to from the gate uh, from the doors just over to uh, young adults. I just want it to be a gradual increase Oof. in the numbers of people that actually come. I just oh, want to yeah. see a bunch of people just gradually going and going because I want the future uh, I want the future generations to be a shining light to any other generations that are to follow to be a source of a beacon from like I said the lives of the world so that people are not influenced by the confusion in which they're in being indulged in but by the truth that God leads for them as well. Amen. Amen. That's so good. He said, I want to, I just want to see that increase and you want to see people more engaged. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Let me say this. Just how we can, you can help me is by telling other people about it. Telling your, your next generation that's underneath you, right? Your friends that you may still know who are 17 or 16 mm -hmm. that may still keep in contact with you. You guys be like, hey, this is the place you want to be at. On Wednesday night, lives are transformed. On Wednesday night, you meet Jesus. On Wednesday night is the place to be. It is the best place to be. I guess I want to just close it with this. We're going to get ready to close our time together, this podcast, with a prayer. And um, I just want to pray. I want us to join. We're going to have Ogie actually pray us out. Um, and Ogie, what I want you to do is just pray for our youth and pray for this upcoming retreat. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah. So if you can just pray for us, Ogie, and start it up. Father God, I just want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here and talk today. I want, I want to thank you for allowing us to be a voice to all the people who want to go to this upcoming retreat. Um, Father God, I just pray that there'd be an influential, life-changing event that goes on in this upcoming retreat. Over the years, we've had so many people have their lives changed by this one weekend out in the out just over upstate New York having fun, meeting you, and having their lives changed. Father God, I just want to see uh, I just want to see lives turned around from whatever they're going through, whatever confusion that they're going through, whatever sexuality they don't even know that they are, whatever substance abuse that they that they're addicted to, whatever person that they should not be that should, they should not be with. I just pray that all those chains be broken in this one night. Father God, I pray that any anybody that wishes or that even is getting dragged into this i pray that it not be for it not be for the light of thought i pray that you work within the youth's lives work within every 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 child's life father god to not just have their life change but have their friends life change have their relatives life change have all their cousins their nieces the nieces and nephews and the children that they're going to have when they grow up and have them go through youth father god i want let there be a new generation of uh, people leading you leading everyone else towards you father god i pray all this in jesus name amen 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 hey if you enjoyed this time together this time of uh, Unchanging Podcast, I want you to hit the like button. I want you to subscribe to us. I want you to spread the news. We want people to hear about the retreat. We want people to hear about the youth. We want to hear. We want people to hear about what God's doing right here in Rockland County. Um, 
Hey, Giannis, anything to say to the parents real quick before we go? Oh, to the parents, man? Just tell oh. them something. Oh, my goodness. Please let your young ones come to the youth, please. They really, I think this generation really needs it. And especially for me that has grown up in the youth who has who has had miracles of healing from their from themselves. For me, I, I'm just going to say a little brief. I survived. I'm a survivor. I just survived eight years of so many of so many seizures. And I was just I was in the like around last year. I was my doctor said no seizures at all. Praise that we've God. been praying for so many years that it's been a year since I have had no seizures with Praise no God. medications at all. So parents, I we would want for you for you um to send your young ones to youth. Let them know the word so much because this generation really needs it. We know that the. We know that the devil has so many ideas that he wants to implant into the, into this world, but we know that but we know that with the strength of God, we can transform this world around that we know for sure. And with your help from your parent and with your help parents by putting your young ones into this amazing community of worship, of praise, of God, your young ones will be safe from all the devil from all the deeds that the devil has implanted into this world that's so good and i just want to add that even uh even if you don't have the funds you have a lot of uh you have a lot of uh, help here pastor edwin a lot of the leaders can talk with you and look for a financial plan so that you can get your trip can you get your trip a uh, kid on the trip if you don't have the funds to do so there's a lot of people here that are willing to let your child go mm. on this life-changing life-changing experience because it is worth it it is that wor- it's worth every single penny. Absolutely that you can put worth it to your kid because it is the one tool that you can use to ensure that your kid will be a follower of Christ. Wow, that's really good. Thank you so much, Giannis. Thank you so much, Ogi. Thank what a you. pleasure to have you guys. I'm so excited about what God's doing in your lives. And I'm looking forward to what God's going to do in the kids, the young people's lives that are coming up. So God bless you guys. Take care. <laughs>